Good morning, uh, dear participants, dear colleagues, dear partners. Um, welcome to this uh, um, fourth event in a series of events uh, devoted to review the latest developments on European memory policies. The first of such events took place at the House of European History in 2018. And we would like to thank our partners for having ensured that we work together on the cont continuity of these events. The goal each year is to sit institutions around the table to exchange figures, analysis and indicators that have marked the past 12 months. Memory organizations and stakeholders are particularly welcome in the discussions as this is an excellent occasion to exchange feedback and to discuss the way ahead. From the point of view of European integration, this year has been marked by two important anniversaries. On the one hand, the 80th anniversary of the Federalist Manifesto, written by Altiero Spinello, Spinelli and his comrades in the prison of Ventotene, in the midst of World War II. On the other hand, the 17th anniversary of the Treaty of Paris, giving the, first, giving the way to the first European community devoted to coal and steel, as we all know. While the House of European History, where we were in 2018, can be seen as a place of reflection and awareness on all the main dynamics of contemporary European history, including the different memory regimes and the likelihood of a shared uh, European memory. At the other side, the Jean Monnet House, where we are today, even in the virtual environment, um, at the Jean Monnet House, we particularly strive to place European integration among the topics of memory studies uh, that we are increasingly concerned with. Both the House of European History and the Jean Monnet House are, are meeting places wide open to people and groups with all kinds of interests and point of, points of view. Pla places where they and where we together can discuss and assert, assert differences, but hopefully also find a common ground. Concerning the development of memory regimes in Europe, I think that terms such as multidirectional memory are terms that can help addressing the impact of one memory, the memory of one victim group on another. And they are helpful to see the, all the um, interactions between the memory uh, memories and um, to avoid and overcome memory competition and memory conflict. To conclude, I would like to thank our partners, the European Observatory on Memories and the Istituto di Studi Federalisti Altiero Spinelli for their collaboration. And we look forward to many more editions of the Taking Stock on European me uh, Policy Memories events, either in uh, Jean, Jean Monnet House or in the House of European History in Brussels or virtually like today. So a warm welcome to all participants and thank you already for um, what um, I'm sure will be a very, very interesting and fruitful debate in the hours to come. Thank you very much, uh, Constance. Thank you for your words. Uh, good morning, bonjour, buenos dias to everybody. And joining also from the European Observatory of Memories, uh, my colleagues here and this uh, fulfilled collaboration since many years ago uh, with the European Commission, now also the DG Justice and the European Parliament uh, colleagues from the Jean Monnet House and House of European History, and also the people who make possible with Deborah Ricchetti, our team also, we all and uh, all the people of the from the observatory, Fernanda, and technical issues. So, uh, well, we are uh, here to debate, uh, to present also this new and broad new program uh, that we are going to, to debate and to present uh, today. This CERF program, uh, who is including and talking about this remembering public policies on the European level from the European Commission, but also the colleagues from the European Parliament who has a big, big uh, projects pro and, and these uh, big institutions dealing with the past. And as uh, Constance said, uh, we have a broad and very big uh, program platform from the next four years also and the next year, dealing with these roots of the European uh, Union, the values, the, the founders, and this Vento uh, Tene Manifesto that we are collaborating nowadays with Spinel Institution too. And I say hello to our colleagues there. And uh, you will see uh, about 11.30 and you will uh, attend this presentation of this small book that we are doing uh, also with our partners around Europe, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. 
dealing with these public policies on memory. Regarding these uh, many, many challenges nowadays we have, we still having last year, last year we say one year ago already, oh, hope we next year we can do it presentially, not virtually, not digitally, but we're here still uh, digitally. I, I would say next year is the 10th anniversary also from the European Observatory Memories, and we would love to organize some kind of a big event also with the Commission and the Parliament and, and you colleagues. And we hope this time, I hope to, to be presential and all together in, in Brussels or even in Barcelona. So yes, we are going to deal with these uh, important topics from the values, from the citizenship, from the rights, but also taking care of the nowadays conflicts that and debates that sometimes are the same uh, and sometimes these news ones. And I, I'm just going to quote uh, this uh, kind of uh, sometimes uh, danger of this, uh, not only revisionism, but also this relativism nowadays, not only about the crimes uh, of the 20th century and this remembrance uh, mm, public policies on memory that we have to take care about, but also with another uh, challenges about, uh, you know, integration, racism, gender, and, and, uh, and other programs. So thank you very much to be here. And I'm going to leave the floor to Marty Grau, who is coordinating with us. Marty, you have the floor. Thank you very much and we'll follow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Constanza and, and Jordi. Well, it is also my pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, fourth event of the Taking Stock on, uh, of Eu European Memory Policies in, in 2021. As it has been said uh, four years ago, we thought it was uh, convenient, it was useful to, to devote uh, a day or two days actually in, in, in 2019 before COVID to analyzing the latest trends of the uh, past 12 months every, every year. At the same time, uh, it is a, a moment for a discussion of, if possible, of, of hard data. So sometimes uh, it's something that maybe it, it doesn't necessarily happen in other events because sometimes that leads to possibly a, a, to a, a more a, a dry discussion or, a, or just just to 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 look at the at the, at the hard facts at the hard data of of, of uh, figures of uh, percentages of statistics but it is uh, at the end of the day uh, useful and important that we take a moment to to do that and then maybe a more uh, lively part, a more colorful part that uh, is devoted to, to the analysis of, of uh, uh, more conceptual issues of the developments that have happened um, over the years that um, allow us to have a more, um, a more conceptual discussion. Uh, so both both things will be uh, in our program today. We're looking forward to all the presentations that are very, very interesting in scope, very diverse. Uh, uh, as, as far as the Jean Monnet House is concerned, we would like to let you know that uh, we, we hope uh, soon we'll be able to host this kind of events again. But this year, at least, we could uh, be a little bit closer to you via uh, a new a virtual um, device platform, uh, this taller platform that probably uh, many of you, of you have already uh, tested and experienced in, in the last uh, three quarters of an hour or an hour or so. And I would like to encourage you to continue doing so uh, throughout the day. That platform allows you to visit the, um, the museum uh, virtually, to browse the different objects, the different uh, spaces the museum contains with videos, with uh, audiovisual materials. And also there's spaces for networking, for um, getting to know each other. Uh, that is actually one of the initial goals of the Taking Stock events also, that uh, this networking part, this exchanging in, at a more uh, personal level, at uh, you know face-to-face. -face. And we can al almost do that uh, via our avatars. Of course, it's not the same thing, but it's also a playful experience that I hope you will all enjoy. Uh, 
again on the Germany house and on the more the more bro broader level for this year and the year to come would like to let you know that we have been developing a great deal of new infrastructures of new um, activities for for our visitors for researchers for uh, practitioners also uh, in the, the year to come there will be a, a facility that will be able to host uh, networks, universities, partners uh, on site. So events will be able to to be organized there with with overnight night stay. So I think that is an asset also for the future of of this events and not just. Of course, I would like to encourage uh, all of you also to 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 let us know if we can we can support some of the activities that you all do throughout Europe. And we'll be happy to, to see how we can help, including this possibility of organizing events at the Jean Monnet House. After all, it's not about it's not just about what we do or about the initiatives that we set in motion ourselves, but it's also about the platform that we want to provide to, to all of you for your own activities. So uh, just a final word, uh, in, I was talking about our, our own initiatives or our, our own input in, in all this. While we see ourselves modestly as, as uh, uh, an element to, to introduce maybe gradually, but more and more, uh, also the, the memory of, of European unity and, and uh, uh, people who out of solidarity, in many occasions out of the, uh, the experience of war also decided to, uh, to, to strengthen the, the, the bonds across nations and that made um, European unity possible, not just or not always uh, behind desks or in, uh, in dark offices, but uh, sometimes on the ground, really just uh, being, being out there uh, as activists, as, as, as promoters, as grassroots promoters of, of this very much needed uh, unity. So thank you very much to all, uh, to our partners, uh, also to the European Commission present today. And of course, uh, since the beginning, it has been an asset that the European Commission is, is taking part and taking an interest in this kind of meetings. We really uh, appreciate that. And we very much hope that this will compete continue in the future and it will be enhanced in the, in the years to come and also the all the other partners that we have uh, we, that have been mentioned also I would like also to to, to welcome very specially uh, the the Council of Europe uh, for the first time in our meeting but uh, via a very important um, initiative that has seen the light this year the observatory for history teaching uh, on history teaching in Europe. And uh, we'll be able to uh, find out more uh, in the second round table uh, later uh, this morning. Well, thank you very much. And maybe uh, I think um, now the, the, the floor is to the first round table, if I'm not mistaken. So I think majority the, the floor is, is back to you.